I'm here with Dr. Laura Backrack at Stanford Medical School, and, and what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about normal and abnormal growth in children. Fascinating. So this is an important concern. Parents really worry if their child is growing normally, and physicians worry about this too because the change in height is an important barometer of how the child is doing overall in terms of health. Right. So to begin to assess the child's growth pattern, we have to think about what are the determinants of where the child should be on the growth curve. Right. The number one most important determinant, of course, is genetics. Right. Short parents more likely to have short children and vice versa. And that's true even that's so, so even when a, a child is young. If like big because sometimes I've seen the opposite. So, you know, people who are petite have, have large children and all the rest. But it is true that even if someone is large, or if someone is large, they're more likely to have large children even, even infants and toddlers. You've hit upon important, a really important uh, issue that's shown here in this slide. The size of a baby at birth isn't necessarily going to reflect the genetics. There are babies that are born small because mm -hmm. mother didn't have prenatal care, mother was a smoker, other factors that compromise the growth of the child. And those babies can be born small for their gestational age. Right. During the first two to three years of life, they have a chance to catch up on the curve right. and reach what's called their genetic potential. So, so let's so say... Let's just make sure. So I want to make sure. I've seen these curves before right. when I went to visit the pediatrician. Even I remember this when I used to visit the mm -hmm. pediatrician, um, which I did maybe a little too long. But uh, so, so this is... So this is this axis right over here is age in months in months. So uh -huh. this is right here birth. Right. This is birth. Right. And so if so if a baby is born at I don't know uh, this is the weight right over here. So if a baby right. is born at five pounds, mm -hmm. this is is this in pounds? This is kilograms. Okay. Yes. So five pounds is right over. That's a low. Is that right? The six. Yeah. Five pounds would be right over here. So this would be a baby born at five pounds. Right. And it, and I'm talking more here during this growth lecture about um, the height or length of the baby okay. um, throughout uh, babyhood and in childhood. But let's say the baby were born light in weight and short in length. And so maybe upper... 18 inches right here right. would be a short right. length. And let's say that that baby was small because his mother had issues during the pregnancy. Is that always the case that the baby will be small because of issues or I mean? No. Uh, it, it, the bottom line is that genetics plays less of a part in right. the size of the baby at birth than I it see. will later on in childhood. Right, makes sense. So to come back to your point, um, you will meet parents whose babies seem to be larger or smaller than they are. Right. Um, but by age three, the child should be... Hold on one second. Let me just close this. Okay. By age three, the child should be uh, in his or her genetic groove, if you will. I see. So there can be movement on the growth curve in the first two to three years of life. There can be catch-up growth where the child who was small, let's say, moves from below the curve up to right. the 50th percentile so by would, age 24 months. So this would be a child who does something like this. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, and you can have the converse where you have a very big baby. Let's say mother had uncontrolled diabetes and the baby was born very large. That baby can have catch-down growth to right. the 50th percentile. Right. By the age of three, certainly movement across percentiles is considered to be abnormal huh. and warrants an invest investigation. So you really can predict someone's even adult uh, height based on where they are at three? A general rule of thumb is that by age two and a half to three, the child is in their genetic groove. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Wow, I didn't realize that that quickly you can kind of. So if a, if a child at age three or four is in the 25th percentile in height, it's unlikely that they're going to be in the NBA. In general, that's true. There is a few exceptions. There are late uh, bloomers, what we call a constitutional delay of growth. But in general rule would be what percentile you are by the age of two or three is pretty much where you're going to track if all things are going normally. Wow, I never realized that it was that soon. And genetics is an important determinant, as I said. We can actually do a calculation of where we think a child should end up, the so-called mid-parental height, which we're going to talk about later. Okay. So genetics is the critical factor, um, but whether or not you reach your genetic potential means that the cards have to be lined up appropriate. Right. So the cards that are important for achieving your genetic potentials, first of all, number one, um, normal amounts of hormones that are important for growing. Right. And those are thyroid and growth hormone to a large extent. Right. 
A second factor, of course, is adequate nutrition. Yeah. And we think worldwide of children who are undernourished, who don't uh, look anywhere near their age in terms of height because they're so undernourished. It really right. cramps their style. And you see the reverse of that. I mean, you know, as a, as a, I don't know what I'm officially, I was born here. My parents weren't, so I'm like first generation or second generation. But you see that in that, is that you see a lot of people my generation are much taller than their parents because their parents were probably mal malnourished in some way. Certainly there can be a secular trend where the children get taller than the parents uh, if the um, children have a different environment. Um, the other thing we notice about nutrition in our country is the overnutrition of our children. Mm. And what happens with obesity is that children may um, grow faster uh, in terms of both weight and height oh, wow. uh, for their age. Um, they don't end up taller in the long run, but they move ahead qu more quickly through the maturation process. I see. I didn't know. Okay, wow, it can accelerate. Exactly. I, didn't, I never realized that. That's fascinating. And then we think about psychosocial factors. There literally is a situation where uh, in, can, infants can be deprived of parental um, love and support, and you see some dwarfing there. In a teenager, we see problems with eating disorders that's a cross between nutrition and a psychological problem. So psychosocial factors. So that's well. fascinating. So, so it's, it's, they've shown or it's, it's been seen that it's noticeable changes in physical development based on, I guess, attention and love and... Yes, there is actually a syndrome called psychosocial dwarfism, where wow. you can actually see a slowdown in growing uh, without adequate um, interpersonal support. Wow, that's fascinating. So the issue is, um, when do you need to worry about right. a child's growth pattern? Right. Um, in order to interpret that, you have to understand about the variability in growth. In the first two to three years of life, children grow much more quickly than they will later on. By the age of three, until they hit puberty, children should grow two inches a year. Two inches a year. This yes. is from the ages of? Two, after they're out of toddlerhood until they hit puberty. Wow, so this is like three to puberty. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But when kids will hit puberty is going to be variable. Right. Uh, and so that's an issue. Um, if the children are growing at a normal rate, it's not necessary to memorize the inches per year children will track along the growth curve. And if we can turn to the next slide or next graph, mm -hmm. well, this is a graph for what we use for older children after the age of two up until they're 18. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, curve that we use. Now beyond the age of two, I said to you, it's not normal for children to necessarily cross percentiles. So if, for example, you have a child who is tracking along the fifth percentile every year, growing their fifth. two inches this a year. This is the fifth Right, the okay. lower line there. They're right. moving along steadily, steadily, steadily. Right. That child has a more reassuring growth curve than one, for example, who as a five-year-old had been at the top of the curve. Right, a five-year-old, so five-year-old is right, right there. And then the next year is on the 75th, moving down a line. I see. And the year after is on the 50th percentile. Right. Now, at that point in time, the child has theoretically a normal height because it's within the curve, but there's something very abnormal about that rate of growing. I and see. that's the child that's more worrisome Interesting. than the shorter child. Fascinating. So bottom line, when a child would come in to present to me because of a concern about growing, I'd first of all try to decide if they're short and if they're growing normally. And those are two different questions. The first question is, are they short? And are they short can be defined by looking at these curves. These are curves representing the spectrum of normal height for healthy American youth. And they yeah. go from the 5th to the 95th percentile. So you can compare a child to the population as a whole. But I also like to calculate what we call the mid-parental height. Yeah. Okay, this is where we take into account the heights of the parents. Yeah. Because... That's the most important determinant. So how we calculate that is as follows. We take the height of mom and dad and average them. Okay, let's do that. So, so I, I'm 5'9", if okay. I'm wearing okay. decent shoes. Okay. So that, should I do it in 69 inches? Okay. And how tall is the mother She's of your children? Five, five, six. She's 5'6". She's 5'6". Which is why I don't let her wear too large okay. heels. Okay. And are we trying to calculate your son or your daughter? Uh, let's do my son, since okay. he's a little older. So let's see, he's okay. plus 66 inches. Okay. So we'll take the midpoint of that. 
Okay, so that's for an inch and a half, right? So it's what, 67 and a half inches between me and my wife? Right. And we're going to add two and a half inches. Okay, so that gets us, what, to, to exactly 70 inches. Right. And that's the height prediction for your son. Oh, very good. Plus or minus. Oh, plus or minus. Four uh, inches. Plus or minus four inches. Oh, that's so a big that difference. Would, it's a big difference. Yes. But that's the nature of human variability. I see. Okay, now if this were your daughter, mm -hmm. we would take the 67 and a half inches mm -hmm. and subtract two and a half inches. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, she so I guess we're 65. To, right. So she, 5, 5. Exactly. Plus or minus 4 inches. Plus or minus 4 okay. inches. So that's something we do. We then calculate. Um, in fact, let's plot that right on the curve. This is the boy's curve. Mm -hmm. So let's plot the 70 inches. 70 inches right. is right over here. Right. Okay. Okay. And then the range of um, 74. 74. Um, and to 66. Right, exactly. Pretty broad range. Yes. Okay. But if we had a child who was growing well below the curve and we thought the midpoint should be about the 50th percentile, that child would be short for the family. So uh, we always like to take the family heights into account. Okay. I see. So number one question, is the child short? It will depend on what the height prediction is. I see. So, so if, yeah. if my son was tracking down here at the 5%. That would be at, concerning. Even if he's growing the 2 inches every year and he's it, tracking that, he, it still would be concerning. Well, it would raise some questions in our mind. Right. But the, but the more important factor is not just where they are on the curve at the moment, but are they growing at the normal rate. And the child who is not growing at the normal rate raises r more red flags than the child who's trotting up the curve. Fascinating. It's interesting. Wow. So that's the issue, and that's what we approach every day. Uh, we want to look into the various causes um, potentially for a growth slowdown. We want to address treatment to the specific uh, etiology. Um, and we, an etiology means? Well, for example, if the child has a deficiency of thyroid hormone, we want to give thyroid hormone So etiology back. is like the cause, the cause of the, right, right. If the child isn't growing because he has a nutritional problem like celiac disease, mm. we want to put him on a special diet to address yes. that issue. Some parents think, well, what we want to do, my child is healthy and normal and growing normally, but I want to give him some growth hormone. That becomes a topic in its in right, itself. right. Very good. Well, well, thank you for this. This was super yeah. informative.